start it while I text Jill. Okay, I'm going to record. Um, oh, thank you. All right. Tracy, or, I mean, um, Cheryl, do you want me to to do the lead on this? It, um, well, we easier, since you can't see people or. Yeah, I can't see people. So if you'll help have, have I don't know how many are in our group, but let's go ahead and think we about. Have, yeah. We have nine participants. Okay. And um, how about um, Cheryl, if, do you want to facilitate and I'll take notes? Okay, very good. Work? And I've got the recording on. And All right. Everybody. Um, you'll and just have to bow help out. me make sure that we talk to everyone because I can't see you, unfortunately. So okay. um, just make sure that, um, that we uh, quickly kind of go through these things. So I'm hoping that you've been thinking about, okay, our partners, do we have any? What have we done to get them? And um, and is there um, some things that maybe we should start doing? So is there any ideas out there about um, activities that you might want to um, start, start doing that would be good to ramp up that maybe you should be doing, but you haven't done yet? Okay. And Go if ahead. you if you would unmute yourself and especially because Cheryl can't see, just say who, say who you are and where you're from. Thank you. Thank sure. you. What are you doing? Oh, you doing I'll do it. Great. This is Selena Ford and Cheryl, I have an email in my outbox to you. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, so it obviously cultivating relationships, but in that, in, in cultivating relationships, I think proving value of that relationship and that time and collaboration, um, because we're just all so busy and just making sure that, you know, people want to show up and participate and really, you know, honor that you have something to give. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Are you using meetings or are you using a newsletter or are you, how are you doing that? So I thought we were on the start and that's what I'm thinking. I need to be starting. Start. More okay. Doing um, more of that. Okay. Yeah. You know, I just go back to thinking about how busy we are yeah. and just being able to um, develop those relationships and give value to them. I, I okay. need to be more cognizant of that. Okay. All right. Anyone else have a start? Um, hi, my name is Taylor McLennan. Um, I am with South Dakota. Um, I just started in this uh, position with um, the respite program. So I I am doing all of these things. I am I'm way at the start from part of all of this. So um, it's the part that I think I'm really going to take advantage of uh, with these groups is uh, getting the chance to listen to all of you and, and kind of just how you guys take the approach and what you guys find has been helpful. Um, some of the pros and cons to the routes you guys kind of go and, and I can kind of go from there to see what we need to be doing. And I can kind of talk with uh, m the girl who is currently running the respite program in South Dakota and just kind of touch base with her and, in you know, just kind of find a better way to improve the program. Okay. So you're identifying some of those relationships you need to improve and, and really those important connections. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone got a, another start? Something they're planning to start? Hi, my name is Tina Yurk and I'm with the Illinois Respite Coalition. Uh, we actually just started in um, December a statewide respite task force, which was really a year um, in the planning with our uh, uh, state lead agency. And as we started this, uh, really looking at making sure that it included all of the different state agencies so that we could get the right kind of input from everybody. Um, but now we also realize that it took us a little longer to get this whole process started and we sent out agendas saying we're going to meet quarterly and we're like, that's too much time. So, you know, we're going to be really looking at starting to um, 
send out some assignments and groups and see, you know, um, if we could have some kind of uh, committee meetings prior to this uh, quarterly meeting so that we can make sure that we really um, meet our goals of the task force in the next 24 months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so tightening up some of those uh, mm -hmm. interactions, uh, mm -hmm. making sure that they're happening more frequently. Okay. Right. Uh, does anyone have a stock what is, or something that they know isn't really contributing? Uh, maybe their group is just kind of floundering. I don't know that there's things that maybe they've decided you've decided um, don't do a lot, don't contribute a lot to uh, to your collaboration. Or if you have another start, or if you have another continue, um, something that you know is working, that's good to share. Um, so who haven't we heard from? This is um, Tracy. Oops, sorry. Oh, very <laughs> good, Tracy. Go ahead. It's Tracy with Alabama Lifespan Respite. And um, we have um, historically had very good relationships, partnerships, collaborations with our larger agencies across the state, our state partners. Um, so we are focusing more on the individuals and the stakeholders. So we have started um, some efforts to uh, really get at that grassroots level to partner more and collaborate more with our community level stakeholders. And uh, we're doing that basically just good old fashioned relationship building, going out to um, community centers and um, into events in the community, especially in rural areas and uh, just making the introduction and having one-on-one -on -one conversations over coffee to try to try to get those uh, partnerships and collaborations going at that grassroots level. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah, um, and so you're kind of, you're doing the audience thing, you're building your audience and going to um, be in that little bit of a spotlight on occasion. I can see that happening. Okay, very good. Anyone else has some something that they would put in the start, stop, or continue group? Yes. Um, hi, this is Lita Nelson from Arizona. Hi. hi. So one of the things we did when we started it was um, we wrote letters out to um, other governmental agencies, um, service providers. We targeted um, more rural areas where um, we thought there was way more need for respite support. Um, and then once we had those letters out, we had just pretty much introduced um, the Lifespan Respite Grant, what we wanted to do, and then how we were seeking collaboratives. We gave um, everyone options um, to either come to resource sharing uh, or share information about their respite programs, other grants they may have, and how they think that it would fit into our overall plan. Um, we did leave it open to also invite individuals that wanted to be um, a referral source or even someone that would be providing referrals. Um, so that really seemed to help um, start the Arizona Respite Network. And we started looking at gaps in services. Um, and so right now we have taken a little bit of a break in terms of meetings, but those meetings are happening quarterly and will be restarting this month. Okay, starting up. So it sounds like you have something that is working that you wanna continue. Um, those in, invitations obviously had some good results. And so you're continuing to invite um, new partners, I assume, um, as you um, identify them. Is that kind of the sense? Yes. And so that really helps us too, to identify others um, in, in different areas. Um, one of the targets now populations are going to be um, grandparents raising grandchildren, um, putting a little bit more focus in that, you know, area as, as far as um, finding service providers or even educators or individuals that work with traumatized children. Um, mm -hmm which impact, you know, grandparents. So there's been a lot of work and it seems, you know, we we did put a lot of focus into older adult um, family caregivers. And now we want to shift the focus a little bit more to grandparents. Okay, right. And that's something that everyone has bought in on is that you're gaining some 
um, commonalities with pe- with others in your in your uh, interactions is that that this is an area that they all feel a um, as a joint kind of effort. Oh yeah, um, when we have our um, Arizona Respite Network meetings, for instance, um, we provide um, topics. So it's either going to be um, services for older adults or services for grandparents raising grandchildren. And someone or everyone kind of finds themselves somewhere in that space. Either they're the older older adult that needs services or they know someone who's taking care of a, a younger child. So it mm-hmm. really starts to, you know, grandparents start to look at services for themselves Mm -hmm. but also support for their, their kiddos, you know, so that's been um, one thing that's what we've seen that is pretty successful. Okay. All right. All right. We're about out of time here. I don't know if we mentioned how much time to spend in our breakout group. Um, Um, Eight eight minutes, about eight minutes left on the clock. Okay, good. I can't even see. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, um, anyone else that has something in the start or stop or continue? Um, so, you know, if you, everything's in the start group, then you, we may have too many things, you know, to try to start, but, uh, the continue thing, you know, if you're still continuing activities and you're not trying anything new, then, um, and you aren't stopping anything, um, you want to at least, uh, try to think about what you're doing and what is really working and what you maybe need to start doing um stop or start doing so anyone else have some comments uh who hasn't shared yet hi this is amber from new york um i i just started um on the lifespan respite team here in new york and i'm kind of our adrc liaison so i'm if it's okay i'm just kind of listening in to everyone (laughs) because i don't have too much to share yet but you're not working on partnerships or collaborations um where you're engaging in people with people or they were they already there or or are you still kind of at the beginning to build them um i am just like coming on to the team so i'm not even sure um Mm -hmm. of the partnerships and everything yet so I'm just kind of on this call to start learning about everything if that's okay all right this is Susan I'm just going to say you're you're entering um into really friendly supportive territory you're going to have wonderful partners in New York just just observing them over the years so I'm thrilled to hear you're part of that group thanks sure All right, so thinking about all the things you're doing or could be doing to gain new partners, new collaborators, new stakeholders, new new relationships, um, and and to kind of support those, um, who's got something that they can uh, contribute into the either the start, the stop, or continue? Other thoughts that have come up? Um, Well, I'll just jump in again. Hi, it's Tina from Illinois. So with this task force um, and sending out invitations and then wanting to keep it at a certain number, um, there were a lot of um, different providers who were not a part of it. And we have always had a provider meeting that um, we've hosted forever. And um, some providers were very upset that they were not a part of this task force. Mm-hmm. So the one thing that you know we want to make sure of is that they feel a part of it. So we're sharing. Um, we just did a statewide caregiver survey and we shared it first with the task force and then we decided to share it with our providers and get all of their input to make sure that they also feel like a partner because we want to continue this group. We want to know who has wait lists, who doesn't, what's working, what's not. Mm-hmm. So um, so that's where we're taking something new and trying to make sure that we uh, uh, don't lose this other group that's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bringing in new partners brings um, some challenges, that's for sure. But mm-hmm. sounds like you're at least acknowledging how um, important it is to make sure everyone's at the table. So I think that's um, a really good thing. Okay. Any other thoughts? 
Are we out of ideas? You know, um, one of the things that um, we saw happen in our state in Nevada was we had um, the caregiver coalition who put on an annual caregiver recognition event and um, it got canceled this year. Um, lack of sponsorships, lack of volunteers, lack of um, uh, committed leaders. And, um, and so it was like, what? What did we do that worked? And what did we do that obviously didn't work anymore? Sometimes reevaluating that. Um, and one of the challenges with the leadership was that there were not defined roles for for participants and there wasn't there was an ask but no um, option to say here's how i can contribute and what would fit for me and to get that commitment from them and so um so it didn't happen this year after years uh, decades of having this event going on in our area to recognize caregivers and so um so those partnerships you think you cannot take them for granted. They're really important to make sure that you're keeping it fresh, that you're making new connections with that organization because of turnover. Um, you, you know, there's new people at the table. We're just visiting with some new people who are coming to the table. They, um, they need to also be engaged in, in that process. And it may change what the goals or the priorities are based on what you, what you learn, but to be able to say, Ha, something doesn't work anymore. We've got to stop that. We've got to start doing something that will work is really important in evaluating the results of any endeavor. Okay. All right. Let's see. I cannot see, Susan, if we've got everyone or everyone's had a chance. I think we do. And we have about two minutes left. If I may just say something um to Taylor from South Dakota because she's starting out. That can be such a lonely <laughs> place to be. So just a reminder, Taylor, that you're part of a network. So if you somebody said something that you like and you want to know more, phone them, email them, message them. It this network really supports states, states really support one another. Or, you know, call us at Arch and we'll help find you somebody who knows something that you want to learn about. So yeah, don't feel, don't be a stranger and please ask for support if you need it. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate that support because yeah, sure. I'm really, really looking to expand this program. So um, not even just having the support locally, but having it nationally with you guys that, that uh, makes my job a lot easier and more yeah. comfortable. You're part of the family. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is also an excellent tool um this start stop continue um to to really get the groups to relook at what they've done maybe they've had great success in the past but now the group has kind of lost its purpose doesn't know what it's about and to kind of um say okay here's maybe a, a time to stop and think about what's going on what what do we need to start? What do we need to continue doing? And what is just not working? We need, we've got different people and it's not working for them, whatever it is. Um, so this is a great way to also strengthen those partnerships and relationships by just um, offering that opportunity to review and evaluate how how things are going. So this, this particular tool can be used in many ways, not only just to think about how, what you're doing to gain uh, partnerships and collaborators, but also in all the various tasks. So, um, so hopefully that will be a beneficial tool that you can use in, in other settings. And we're down to four seconds. Thanks. Okay. Cheryl. Uh, if you all want right. to be brief, I'll back you up. No, I, I think you got better notes than I did probably okay. because you were concentrating on that, but, uh, we'll be good. See you in, in just a, a few seconds. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. All right.